Okay. Uh, welcome everybody to the uh, Win in Romans uh, podcast, uh, formerly known as Riffs on Romans. And I think that in some places on your uh, podcast, the liverers, you can find that it says while in Romans, but still has the Riffs on Romans logo. Uh, don't let any of those things confuse you. It's all the same stuff. Uh, it's uh, Ed Anton. Tim Reese and, and uh, Matt Barbaro. Uh, we're with the Hampton Roads Church, and we are going through the book of Romans. Um, and uh, as we have gone through the book of Romans, we've uh, pulled up on Sunday evenings after after church to uh, sort of rehash the, the 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 content that was covered in the sermon in the morning, uh, cutting room floor uh, type material, uh, as we've called it in in previous discussions. Um, where we we you know first kind of take a look at what was covered and then we talk about what wasn't covered and we frequently end up going in various uh, directions and rabbit holes and, and and things of that nature and it's always a lot of fun. Uh, this morning Ed uh, preached on uh, Romans five verses twelve through twenty one, uh, pivotal section of the book, super deep comes really sandwiched in between two really important concepts. Uh, The first part of chapter five uh, talks about uh, reconciliation, but perhaps maybe even more more important than reconciliation, the the amazing, undeserved, world-changing gift that God gives us through the the death and resurrection of Christ uh, while we were yet sinners, that that popular concept that comes out of the early section of, of chapter five. And leads us into what Ed preached on today, and, and we get we get topics like Adam versus Jesus, life versus death, sin versus, versus grace and mercy. Uh, we 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 get things like justification and righteousness, and and maybe even original sin. Um, and of course, it leads into chapter six, which which tells us what our new life in Christ should look like, and that'll be a lot of fun to talk about uh, next week. But for, for this for this recording for this discussion ed um you did a great job this morning um tell us if you would what are some of the things that you thought you landed really well um and, and then maybe uh dovetail from that into what are some of the things that you would have liked to have uh, covered had you had another 40 minutes an hour hour and a half day whatever <laughs> yeah well, you can plumb the depths of this one for quite a bit. It's, uh, probably the most amount of time I've put into a sermon in quite a while uh, because of the content that you just talked about. I like the idea that I was able to at least draw on the contrast pretty well between the one man and the one man. The one man, Adam, and the one man, Jesus. Uh, kind of cool, right, that they use the that one 13 times all through you know it's just again and again uh the talk of this but it but it does seem that it then really does shift it's like he uses adam just as a launch pad because he really does want to get to jesus and the free gift and all that comes from that free gift and all the effects that it has on us but anyway i i i like that i was able to at least introduce the idea of adam and draw the contrast right just as adam disobeyed regarding the tree Jesus obeyed regarding the tree. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Uh, that he, he and his obedience not, not just um, counteracted what Adam had caused by introducing death through sin into the world and condemnation, because if he just counteracted it, then it would have just been a balancing of the scales and a wiping away of the filth. But he didn't just wipe away the filth. He then amped it up with justification and lived a whole life of amazing righteousness uh, and was able to then bring us to a place of of righteousness and justification. Second Corinthians, you know, 521, uh, God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Uh, And. But but there is this contrast, right? Death reign, death's reign exerts a 
a contrast with life reigns, but instead, well, I, I'm sorry. So you'd think that it talks about death reign. You know what? Let me let me put that aside for now. Um, but 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 other than that, I, I think also it was a chance to talk about two things for us as a fellowship. Uh, you know, is, is often the question, I don't think I get grace. I don't think I get grace. Grace is supposed to be so powerful. Why don't I get it? And I, and I think there's two reasons why we don't get grace, because we make it just a subtraction operation and not an addition operation. And that's the extra stuff, right? That um, more than balances the scales. That's the righteousness. That's the justification. I think because we've not allowed that to enter into the big picture and the overwhelm of grace, that we haven't been able to appreciate it as fully. But the other thing is we don't get grace because we have been conditioned to think of a gift as a gift with no strings attached. Uh, and when there's a gift with no strings attached, you immediately in your mind think, well, why not abuse it, right? If, if, the, if the gift's gonna just keep on coming, if he's gonna keep on covering my credit card bill or my bar tab uh, over and over again, uh, why not just keep on rolling as it'll say next chapter? Maybe I should sin more so that grace may increase. Paul says, by no means, that sounds crazy. And we'll talk about that next time when we get together. But I think the reason why that sounds crazy and by no means is because they understood a gift much differently than we understand a gift today, where a gift entered you into a relationship of honor and reciprocity that reinforced itself rather than a unilateral transaction, almost as if it was some sort of commerce where you walk away and there's no connection any longer. Uh, in, in such a case, yeah, then you would have to be saying to yourself, I don't think I get grace. I don't think I get grace. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I think those th those parts worked pretty well. There's a lot there, though, a lot more. Probably we'll, we'll start to talk about some of the a lot more. Um, I think I you know could have gone much deeper into Adam as a type. Uh, Adam as a federal representative. I, I didn't use those words because I knew it would be very difficult, but we'll talk about it maybe tonight a little bit. Um, and also the introduction of the law. Uh, I, I think I did do a good job, by the way, of keeping in mind that, hey, we're still trying to keep together the Jews and the Gentiles under Christ. Uh, and, and so the, any allusions to the law, I, I made sure that I kept reminding us of, of the big picture that uh, the, the task at hand that Paul had in writing the letter. Uh, so I was happy about that to, to remember that, but here, you know what? It was crazy. Like here's, here's, here's my notes um, for this thing. I don't know if you can even see it, but this was on the iPad and I would be like zooming in, zooming out. Uh, there was just way too much to deal with. I tried to do it all on one, one sheet, uh, but, but yeah, it was, it, it was nuts to say the least because the passage is so dense. So there's one verse, I think it's even um, uh, verse 17. It's so dense that Paul doesn't even use a verb. Yeah. He just piles up prepositions and nouns. Uh, there's just no room for it, it seems like in this case. But anyway, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. And, and maybe you, you guys can talk a little bit about maybe some things you, I don't know, maybe thought landed or, or, or also what we, we should probably explore more of because there's a lot more to explore. Yeah, yeah, great, great. And I, a couple, just a couple of things that I thought uh, that I took away from your lesson that was really, uh, really landed well for me. Uh, when, when you talked about uh, the, 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 the two men, you know, be, being Adam and being, you know, one being Adam and one being Jesus, you pointed out that Adam's name means just man, you know, or, or humanity or, or mankind, whatever. Uh, and I thought it was what, what occurred to me is that that, you know, Jesus often referred to himself as the son of man, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, quoting you know, Daniel seven and maybe also Ezekiel. But I, it, it was it was what, what, what I love about this passage is I, I love the way it reveals God's sort of ingenious plans for salvation and, and restoration. And so, you know, you know, God didn't, not only did God counteract sin that entered the world through man uh, mm -hmm. with, but, but, but he, but he, but he used the seed of that. He, he, you know, he used the seed of that man, the son of man. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, 
took a man that was without sin, a man that, but, but yet came from that sinful man nonetheless. And I just feel like that's so, it's just, it's such a redemptive story of, of humanity that, that, uh, you know, it wasn't just that God, you know, cause God did that. He kind of did that stuff with the flood. Well, let me just go, let me just come in and be God and destroy everything and start over. And, you know, he wanted, he, he kind of did that with Abraham and he, and he was going to mm-hmm. do it with Moses at the golden calf incident. But, but this time he's like, no, 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 I'm actually going to use man to redeem, you know, I'm going to become man to redeem man from man. Wow. Yeah. Super, super big circle uh, for that. And I, I really appreciated that. Um, yeah, that, that, that was, that was kind of the big one. I, I also love the way that in the same vein, you said that because Adam chose to try to become God, which was not his place, mm. um, God had to reach down and become man, um, which was, you know, conceivably prior to our understanding of Jesus was not his place, but there, there's this, this reversal that God orchestrates, uh, to, 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 again, redeem mankind. And I hadn't considered that before. And that was, that was, that was very powerful for me. Yeah. And Tim, I think that with your point there too, I was thinking about like in Genesis three fifteen, like how God kind of even like prophesizes that like pretty immediately after the fall, you know, when he says to the devil, like I'll put enmity between you and the woman and her offspring and your offspring and you'll like bruise his head or whatever, or like he'll bruise your head and you'll bruise his heel. But it's even like right there, it's like sort of a foreshadowing of like, there's going to be a seed, you know, that comes through humanity from really Adam. I mean, Eve, he's saying there, but, and that will defeat Satan. Yeah. So it's pretty cool that even right then he's kind of already pointing to, the messiah yeah yeah and this letter this letter will conclude with that right in john uh, in romans sixteen twenty, i think it says the god oh, yeah. of peace will soon crush satan <laughs> under your feet <laughs> yeah. under our feet right because yeah. because we're the ones who will be reigning uh pretty amazing and, yeah and, and, and you know it's, it's i think it's and this is such a this is something that really differentiates christianity from other religions it's it, it's not just that god wins but God wins through his creation. He, he, he does uh, it yeah. through That's his nice. creation. It's like, no matter how, it's like, I'm, I'm going to prop you up and make this work no matter what. <laughs> yeah. I'm working through you. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Yeah. That is. And cool. Ed, I really like to like the, we were talking about it earlier, but I really like the story that you told, like at the end, I thought that, that was a really good analogy you know, just with with God's grace and how we should react. I think that that was a very good, you taught that in a good way where it was like a very relatable story that was very funny. And then the point kind of just came naturally from an audience perspective where it was very, it was a very natural way to reveal a point instead of just saying it. You know, you've said that a lot, that point. And obviously like we get it intellectually, but that example, I feel like everyone could relate to that to some extent or another, whether they were, the child up, you know, or even if they have their own children, but like yeah. just grew up with two cars like that. And then them, you know, him to give the third one, like, that's a great example because it's like, you just, you're going to take care of that with your, you know, with everything that you have, you know? And I feel like you're right. I, I do really think that God's trying to incentivize us to, you know, kind of like the parable of the talents, like where he gives us the talents, but he wants us to multiply it. Um, and I really, I think that that was a great p- part of the sermon where you're saying it's just, it's, it's, it's expected that you're going to, you know, give back and that there's going to be like that reciprocity, like you said, and that you said that um, even in with the Romans that they wouldn't even have a crime for that because it was unthinkable. That was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, Cicero's quote. Yeah. So that's very convicting because that really shows that our behavior needs to be the manifest, you know, the byproduct of the gift. And yeah. I thought that was very yeah. persuasive with that story that it really hit. It was perfect. Perfect analogy. Yeah, amazing. It, it 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 occurred to me as you were talking about sort of the grace and the and the the no strings attached gift and and sort of the, the transactional nature by which uh, really the modern world functions. You know, since since the medieval period, as you pointed out, Ed, in your sermon, and what what it occurred to me how much we have made God we've we, we've tried to make god in that image 
uh, of, you know, and you, we, yeah. I know I'm guilty of this. I'm, I'm guilty of, well, what must I do, uh, you know, um, to be saved and, and then be done? You, you know, how, how do I, how do I get that transaction? How do I, how do I, how do I pull that lever and then go on my merry way with my, with my sort of, you know, my salvation t-shirt on that, that identifies me. And then, but then I get to go back into my own life, into my own, whatever, my own kingdom, quite frankly, uh, yeah. much like Adam and Eve, uh, you know, how do I get to go do my own God behavior, but just keep the, keep the baptism card or, or whatever, or the, you know, what, whatever your faith tradition, you pray Jesus into your heart. Now you're saved. You know what? It, it's all, right. it's, it's all transactional without, without getting grace, uh, as you pointed out, um, you know, and, and you know, huh. again, not to get too much into chapter six, Paul tells us that what this means for us is that we die. You know, <laughs> yeah, like if, mm -hmm. if you can, it's hard to, it's yeah. hard to get grace if you can't get death to self. Um, you know, because your sinful self doesn't exist under grace, you 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 are raised new. Um, your your old self goes away, and I think we we want to we want to paint Christ on our old self, and still still indulge in our individuality and our what we think of as our sovereignty. Um, right. I think that's a big big problem with getting grace for us. And I guess the question that I would have too is just, and I know that it made sense not, you know, delving into it too much, like you said at the time, but like, uh -huh. let me maybe plug in a little bit with the, um, the first couple of verses, just with the whole, you know, basically whatever they call it, but, you know, yeah. with the fact that he's saying, so, you know, death through sin and death spread to all because all sinned. And then he says for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law yet death reigned from adam to moses even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of adam who was of a type of the one who was to come so i guess the question really is and like i see your point that you said can, today you, can you, let me let me let me oh, read yeah. one more verse too with that yeah. but the free gift is not like the trespass for if the many died through one man's trespass so that, that that's also important right if the many died through the one man's trespass yeah uh, then we've got, you know, we'll have the contrasts that, that, that go with all of that. Um, but, but that's a lot. That's a lot on Adam so far that we've seen, right? That sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. And then death spread to all men because all men sinned. Uh, that's, that's a lot on original sin for us to <laughs> kind of wrestle a, a cohesive, idea of original sin that would help us understand genesis 2 3 and this passage it right. seems like they're th this is the big one that a lot of people lean on as they come up with doctrines of original sin exactly and, and like i know with the law like how you said that it was you know maybe for the purpose that he's been bringing it in the whole thing to kind of unify everybody but there also does seem to be this statement here you know that if, if he's saying sin is not counted when there is no law, but he just said that everyone died because of their sin. So, I mean, that has to mean something, you know? And then the next line with the yet death reigned from Adam to Moses. So it's like, like kind of like you were saying in the sermon, it's like, okay, so what happened between Adam and Moses? We know the law didn't happen then. He's saying everyone died. He's saying everyone died because everyone sinned. But if he's yeah. really saying that the sin wasn't counted or whatever the word you use, charged, was that it today? You said charged? Yeah, so yeah uh, it, it invoiced. You know, it's kind of like the like word to Philem invoice with me. Paul yeah. with the, the Philemon or whatever. Yeah, so with, yeah, and, and Onesimus. Yeah. So why don't we talk about the law and then we can go back to original sin? Is that all right? It seems like we're, okay, we're already I think it's down. Kind this of path. intertwined, honestly, right? Because it's he, if I guess what I'm saying is I think if he's really saying, and I could be wrong here, but I think if he's really saying the sin wasn't counted towards them because there was no law, then I would think he has to mean that Adam's sin is what was being counted towards them. Ooh. And, and he, he also has just said, we, we, we've got to remember, all who sinned without the law will perish without the law. And it's showing, you know, 2, 14 and 15, even showing that the, the law was written on their hearts, either condemning or excusing them. So we've got um, 2, 12 through 15 
that has a lot of content in it already that that points to the idea that there's sin and you knew it. It may have been a bit, a bit vague, uh, not as particularized as the 612 or 613 codified laws. And it's interesting, once he starts talking about the law, he doesn't speak of harmatia or sin. He now starts to talk about transgression. Yeah. And that, that becomes to be very specific, a transgression against the law. Um, I don't know the it, significance of that, but, but it is interesting that he does well, shift his language. That, that you think that he's basically, is this basic, I think I understand what you're saying. Are you saying basically he's saying it's not counted in the sense that it's not clearly, like you used an analogy today, like a magnifying glass, like, or with your glasses and you realize how um, ugly all your coworkers were? Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> but so is it kind of like you're saying he is still because I would think that if he wasn't charging it with them, it would have meant that like it wasn't I'm taking it literally is in the sense that, that they're not even it's not he's not punishing them for it even really. It, and I'm not sure, but that's I feel like the real yeah. question is he punishing people for their sin or not? Or if not, then I would feel like it has to mean Adam's sin. Right. And that's probably where at least the doctrine comes from. I'm not saying I even necessarily believe that. I've, this is actually another one that I've always been on the fence about, but I so, but, 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 but okay. So you, you got verse 16 judgment following one trespass brought condemnation <laughs> Not all the trespasses between Adam and Moses, but judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, <laughs> but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. <laughs> well, we, we got, I guess we have to determine how far that condemnation of verse 16 goes. But, but, uh, but could we, could, I, I, I have a thought on the whole counted, you know, not being counted. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, I just throw this out. I, I, I wonder, so with, with the law that we get in, you know, starting in Exodus and, and you get, you get all of these, this listing of the law. And as you mentioned, 613 sort of rules uh, Ed, and, and they also came with punishments, uh, prescribed punishments, yeah. as well as a sacrificial system that must mm. be followed in order yeah. to atone for each of these transgressions. So, but, you know, prior to that, the sin was not counted in that way. It, 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 it still brought death and, and, and was death. And it was death in and of itself. It was slavery as it always has been, but it wasn't, it wasn't counted and accounted for with a legal system that said, okay, you're an adulteress, you must be stoned, or, or you did this, therefore you must uh, go and sacrifice a bull. You know, it wasn't counted like that. Um, it, it, it always brought, brought death from the beginning with Adam, but, but this, this accounting system came with the law. So, that's so what do you think about this accounting that you just mentioned and what Jesus says about variable punishment, right? That it's not just you all are kind of equally burning, uh, but that for those who know and did not obey, yeah. they'll, be, they'll be beaten with many blows versus those who did not know with fewer, still condemnation. But yeah, that's variable. a hard thing to c c conceptualize as a human, right? It's like, what is he going to crank the <laughs> flame up a higher degree in the, you know, in the lake of fire? I mean, that's that's really a sickening concept, to be honest with you. Even though I know it's biblical, but it's too hard well, to even imagine what that would even be. I, I feel like, so so not not to take away from the concept. I think I think the concept that we're trying to ponder here is still valid. But I think I think Jesus was pointing that. Uh, to the religious elite of his time, you know, the fair, it's like, you guys should know better than anybody else. Right. You're, you know, the 613 called, and, you've and, been taught how to practice them, discipled how to practice them. Yeah. You're going to get thrashed. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's like, uh, at, is it James? You know, James says not many of you should desire to be teachers because he kind of talks about the great Scripture judgment, the yeah. risk that comes with that. So I, I, I do think that, um, and, and you know, to, to whom much is given, much is, much is expected, so. Or demanded, I, yeah, depending on translation. Yeah, that, is that Spider-Man? <laughs> great power comes great, great yeah, responsibility. Yeah. But, I think, yeah. But how that actually plays out in uh, eternity, I haven't, obviously I can't tell you, I don't know. So 
one, one more, one more verse or one more bit of content here, although there's more than this. Um, verse 18, one trespass, mm. or depending on the translation, the trespass of one, uh, it, you could, you, it, it's vague, it's vague. And, and the, the English translations almost line up one way or another, you know, half one way, half the other. But anyway, the trespass of one or one trespass led to condemnation for all men. And so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. But let's just key in on the first half since we're talking about original sin for a second. One trespass led to condemnation for all men. Um, so so my, my question about verse 16 is how far did that condemnation go where it says judgment following the one trespass brought condemnation. And that was me just thinking a lot. How wonder how far that went. Well, verse 18 answers it. It went to everyone, everyone who's, who's not in Christ. From Adam to Moses, would you say basically, or, or even including past that? I, I would, I would say anyone not in Christ. Period. Probably. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So you'd say if somebody's not in Christ, basically, then it's that one trespasses sort of. Good, good enough. <laughs> Well, but then 19 says one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, you know, rather than all. Um, I, I don't know why we go from all to many but on both sides, on the positive side of the ledger okay. and the negative side of the ledger. It, it might just be uh, rhetorical variety. Right. And uh, I definitely liked how you point. said in the sermon, Ed, how you said today that you were like that we would all grab from the fruit. And I totally agree with that 100 percent like that. You know, I definitely think that God in his fairness, you know, definitely implied that since they were under the best conditions there in the garden, that if they weren't going to do it, there's no way that us, the offspring of Adam. Right. Yeah. Would be any more successful at some sort of it, it would be impossible really like to even think that because he, he like you said he made adam good so i do feel like in that sense it was indicative that we would do it and the fact that we all have sinned in our own life a bazillion times succumbing to the devil shows that we wouldn't do it either most likely you know it just in our essence at least like but but i guess the question really becomes is and i think we all agree with that but do you think that god's literally counting adam's sin and holding it against everyone is really the question are so it, 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 the, 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 the doctrine is federal representative, mm -hmm. right? Uh, federal coming from the, the term uh, fedus or fodus uh, in Latin for covenant. Um, so a, a federal representative would mean that Adam is a, a covenantal representative that sufficiently represents every one of us. And he sufficiently represents every one of us, not just because God chose him well, but as I think I mentioned, because God actually created him to be right. a fair and appropriate right. and representative of, okay. of, of all of us in that covenant. Wow. Um, we're, we're, we're having to leap to these conclusions, right? There's nothing in the Bible that actually details that. Right. But it's, but Adam, but it's us, type, us doing a little systematic theology, right? right? Like connecting some dots. Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come, seems to be making, right? That line there a little bit implies it. Well, he's not a type of us. Uh, right. So that's important, right? He's a type of Jesus. Right. But not a type of, of uh, you know, we're not the ones who are to come. Uh, he is a tupos or a, um, you know, a, a type is a stamp, and, but, but it's an outline and it, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's reminiscent, but it's not fully the, the, the real thing. Um, and Jesus will be that real thing. And, but Jesus will be a, 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 also a real fair representative. He won't come as Superman, right? He, he'll come having emptied himself of all divinity, Philippians More 2. Time. Say again. He didn't come as Spider Man either. <laughs> no, nor nor as Spider Man. No, he didn't. He didn't have any of that. You know, um, I, I, I think the uh, so, so the way I make sense of this, uh, and I think the text supports it on a deeper level than than a doctrine of original sin, and and, and that is that you know, it says that that sin entered the world. <laughs> 
this is this is chip verse 12 you know so so what adam and eve did it it allowed for it allowed a breach in the wall so to speak yeah right. I, I, you know I, you know so what you know, they they could have just obeyed but but they did the one thing that would that would kind of put a crack in the wall and sin enters in and, and then it goes on to say that sin set up a kingdom of death and sin reigned in death so mm. and and a and morbid we, kingdom yeah, yeah. We, we we as humans are j- just as just as adam became a slave to that we as you pointed out matt uh, as descendants of adam you know the, the sons of slaves are, are going to be slaves um so we we are now ruled over by death we're we're and and chapter six we'll get into that talk us talks about us being slaves to righteousness or slaves to unrighteousness so so regardless of you know an original sin discussion like we're we're condemned because we're we're ruled over by a tyrannical king which is sin sin and death right Um, but but christ christ rescues us He, he brings a new kingdom and he uh, as as the earlier part of chapter five says, he reconciles us back to the king that that we were separated from um, when sin came in and did its thing. So, by, by the way, the, the the coming in is bound. I, I think the the law, by the way, gets mentioned in the end because he's doing a bit of a chiasm as well. Um, okay. And and and, and some of it has to do with rhetoric. But but you use that phrase, sin came in. It's not the same. He, he uses a very interesting phrase for the law came in, in verse 20. Uh, it is peres erkamai, uh, which means to come in unwelcomed, to smuggle yourself into a house unwelcomed. But that's but how you isn't that interesting? So the law kind of smuggled its way in or, or weaseled its way in. <laughs> To increase the trespass. So that's the word that Paul uses. It's a very God, negative isn't word. Isn't God the one who gave the law, though? I know, I know, right? <laughs> so why, why use that word? <laughs> like it's well, the law. Well, so, well, now I wonder. So, I wonder. So, I. So you've got sin reigning. So, so, so you know, sin has come in and taken over the world. That. Could could this idea of the law sneaking in, meaning that it snuck in under under death, despite like like snuck in as like a spy or or a, or a saboteur to fight yeah. against the kingdom of death? Oh, I see. Uh, well, it says it came in to increase the trespass. This, that's a tough one, right? I mean, it'd be nice to be able to right. paint he's it that made way. Several but... comments, he's made several comments like, like this in the letters too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is offset with the word he makes up, the superabounded word right yeah. after that. So the law comes in to magnify the trespass, but as that trespass and that sin abounds, grace superabounds mm. all, all the more. Um, so again, the, the, the law did have that function to, uh, set up grace for when grace arrived, right. At just the right time, Galatians four, yeah. Yeah, yeah. um, born under the law, right. At just the right time, Jesus was born, born of, uh, of a woman born under the law. Um, w- why to super abound, uh, for, 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 for all of us, uh, so that the gift, I mean, this idea of a gift being a perfect and big gift is no small thing. And, and he kind of goes through these gyrations to make the gift bigger and bigger and bigger and super abounding uh, by the time that we're done with this little discourse in contrast and comparison. Hmm. So Tim, were you saying that you think that along with, obviously we were talking about whether Adam's actual sin was being counted, you know, towards each person, like the actual sin of him, you know, disobeying God, that, that literal sin that he committed. But were you suggesting also that like, because we're born of Adam, like before, you know, we're born of God, you know, or just born of man and born of Adam man that you're saying, is there something inherently disobedient about people because of that? You think, is that another element to it? Ooh. That's a big question. 
Because I'm not even sold on that necessarily. I've never seen a clear scripture that says that, but I do think it's potentially, like you said, Ed, like if you kind of imply it with implied verses. I, well, we, we 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 go back to his quote of um, what was it? I don't know, Psalm 14. You know, none none seek God, none are righteous, none. Right. That that that, that kind of plays into the the um, uh, Calvinist. Uh, I, I, you know, systematic theology of of uh, depravity. Yeah, I'm not sure if I subscribe to that exactly, but I mean, I guess the question would be, what will we be, is, is why are we all so sinful? Does it have to do with the mere fact that we're humans, you know? Yeah, there, but this is way too, <laughs> this is way too complicated, but there was this whole, whole setup of explanation of, um, of the reformed scholars, all in Latin, of course, where they talked about the idea of posse non peccator versus non posse non peccator versus posse peccator. Those are all Latin words, but posse means possible, peccator means sin, like a peccadillo, you know, like a. So it, the, the idea that uh, mankind before the fall uh, was possible to not sin, posse non peccator. But then after the fall, it was known posse, known po not possible to not sin. Uh, that, that was the, the distinction they made. But I don't know where we see that necessarily. Like there's no point that, that the Bible tells us that, but it's the way the systematic theology developed and it just became overriding. Uh, Augustine developed a pretty intense view of original sin with a slightly different wording of, of some of this passage. Um, and he, he became unique in his wording on that passage. And maybe it's also uh, interesting that he would be the one who developed uh, what became the doctrine of original sin. There, there is original sin, obviously. And there's uh, an effect of that original sin. It's, you know, we can take what we have here, right? One man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Uh, so we can go with that. Um, I don't know how far beyond that we go. Um, the the, the, the right. one man's sin led to condemnation as one trespass led to condemnation for all men. But did it change our nature, right? That nothing is said about that here. Right, right. I'm, I'm more suspicious about that than the than what you just said with the with the imputing it almost, I suppose you could say. I, yeah. That I think is somewhat discussed very plainly here, but I've never seen a scripture that outright said, because like, think about it, isn't there that verse in Ecclesiastes too, where it says like God made man like upright or something, created man upright, but man created many schemes or like sort of many schemes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not sold on that one with the nature thing. I don't know if that's all just a big cop out in a way. You know, I mean, I know that we all do sin, but it just might be the way it is. I don't know if it's like a hundred percent, like you said, guaranteed, like against yeah. our will. I, I, I wonder if it's not somehow attributable to being expelled from the garden uh and, oh, yeah. and and the fact that we don't live in the presence of god mm. and you, you, well you know from a from a you know from a from a story point of view so you know yes as christians we have the holy spirit and you know but but narratively speaking we're we're we, we, we were we were we were in eden in mm -hmm. the presence of god in in you know, in a, in a heavenly place where, where, where heaven and earth met, so to speak. And, and, and being kicked out of that, right. it's like sin is the, is our, is like how we try to survive um, outside mm -hmm. of, outside, mm -hmm. you know, you know, the, the, the Jews tried to use the law, uh, you know, to, to keep them straight and struggled. Um, you know, but you know, we as Christians, encourage one another to walk by the spirit uh and not gratify the flesh so that there's this hope in there that that maybe we can you know that we can certainly do better and ed you even mentioned that when you talked about sort of the difference between you know your pre-baptism days and you know one of the you mentioned your issues with lust that that kind yeah. of you know in, in you know in particular the pornography <clears throat> but but i but i think without a hope in Christ, um, it's like, well, what are you going to do other than mm -hmm. what, what's your go-to, you know, uh, otherwise you're just going to be destroyed. 
I mean, if you if you if you're a, if you're a man in the world trying to get through, mm. how are you gonna how are you gonna make it if you don't sin? Yeah. If if you if you're meek and gentle and follow Christ, you're gonna die. But if you're in Christ, that's not a problem. It, it <laughs> you know that there, there's a there's a strangeness there that you know, without without Christ, without the Holy Spirit, we 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 have no choice but to sin. Because what else are we aiming for? Yeah, that's a good. I like that, Tim. I think that that that's a mm. very good. I think that's good. I think that makes a lot of sense. You're right, because they they even block us from the tree of life, right? They have the angel blocking the tree of. That means something. He's saying <laughs> something there, right? I don't know exactly what the, I mean, but that means that he's. They had the tree of life at one point, and then after the sin, there's no more tree of life. Yeah. You know, so it's it's like you said, it's and Ed, you kind of touched on it too, like the you know toiling of the hands and the. You know, all the, it just kind of, he kind of threw us all out to the desert, you know? Yeah. So we just had no choice, basically, is what you're saying, Tim. There's just no way to practically function. But, you know, I mean, in theory, you know, we're still guilty for that, obviously. Yeah, yeah. By by no means. Yeah. And not making an excuse. Not to make, not, I don't say that to make an excuse by any reality. Yeah, it's just kind of the practical reality. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. In, indeed. Um, so I, I think we all agree then, right? That we, we agree that there's a consequence for original sin. Mm-hmm. We agree that that consequence is rather dire, but praise God, it, it, it also is offset by a, a, another representative act. Uh, mm-hmm. So amen. Uh, God is just and justifier, uh, to go back to Romans 4. But we don't buy the idea that something in our nature yeah. shifted with, right. with, with Adam's sin. Yeah. Uh, we, just don't, we just don't have any biblical data to tell us that. I would agree with everything you just said. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I, you know, that, that would, uh, you know, of course, be a bit repulsive to a reform doctrine, you know, to a, a, a Luther or an Augustine or to a Calvin, Zwingli. Um, and, and, and because of that, because of the total depravity that flows from original sin there, um, they, they have to have the entire tulip system. Because if you have total depravity, the rest has to follow. You have no other choice. But it, it is, I think, the, 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 the genesis of a lot of the tulip. It's, you know, you've got theology and you've got anthropology. Uh, this is anthropology, the study of man, <laughs> the study of man after the fall of Adam. But then on the Catholic side of things, you, you also have a, a stream that flows from Augustine. They both claim Augustine, mm-hmm. uh, but, but, but there, um, that, that stream flows until you have to get to the point of the Immaculate Conception, right? That uh, through your DNA, through, well, I mean, Augustine actually said sexual activity was a, a culprit in all of this, that he made <laughs> sex dirty. He did, he did. He made sex dirty because it produces uh, sin. Uh, and, and the product of it is sin. Uh, so there, there's kind of, he jacked up the idea of, of sexual relations, unfortunately, for many. Uh, talk about a, original sin of Augustine, by the way. But anyway, um, and, and the enduring effect. But, but ultimately, to, to break that in order for Jesus to come, the, the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception had to be initiated, which is not the uh, conception of Jesus, but the conception of Mary. So they had to break it one chain link in the chain back. So the doctrine of immaculate conception is, is about Mary being conceived immaculately because you had to get Augustine's idea of dirty sex out of the picture. Uh, and, and, and then, um, so immaculate means uh, without macula, without uh, stain. Uh, so immaculate, uh, you know, macula degeneration, right? You, you, uh, we know these words it's through other ways, but anyway, the immaculate conception was for Mary so that then she would not, so she would be immaculate to be able to be uh, Theotokos, the, uh, the, the God bearer. That's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I spent that time explaining. <laughs> no, I'm just saying pathetic of them. I'm saying it's just what a, that's just such a stretch. Well, but- sure. You, 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 you're grab, grabbing stuff that's not there and, Maybe but then don't they also use that too for the babies with the baptism? I was thinking too, right? With the original sin, is that another? It, it seems to be, yeah. 
I, I'm sure it, has, it, it shifts from denomination to denomination, but I, but I think it it's grounded in this. And then what 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 is that basis? Because I don't really know that fully. But is it just something like they're they're baptizing the baby because of the sin of Adam or something? I, I would think you have to go to this passage to justify yeah. it. If by one man trespass, death reigned through the one man, right? And then 18, the one trespass led to condemnation for all. So mm. that, that must mean that it's, even though we have the counterbalance, right? Because in verse 12, it says, so uh, it, it says death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sinned. Right, so death spreads, condemnation spreads because all sin. So, did the baby sin? Um, you know, okay. we, I think we had to take it all as a whole. Uh, and if you harmonize it all, then I, I think then you would look at, yeah, we don't have to baptize that baby uh, right away because the baby has not yet sinned. Right, uh, right, right. And then we get to that point of when is it reckoned as sin? When is it counted? Uh, when, when is it invoiced? as sin um maybe never for some that right. are mentally handicapped yeah right right, right. Uh, and, and and maybe never for some that don't reach some age of accountability whatever that is right is right. it the bar, bar mitzvah age that jews established for a 12 13 year old or is it the deuteronomy 139 age where god says they did not know their right from wrong and so they were not held accountable and they're able to enter into the promised land what age was that 20 20 like, yeah. whoa Man, don't tell I think the all teen, I did by 20. Don't tell the teens that. <laughs> don't tell the teen ministry that, Ed. Like, yes, let's go for it. Rum Springer until my 20th birthday. Let, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all tough questions because they're not answered in the Bible. We don't, we, we, we don't get anything definitive. Um, yeah, you're but, right. but I, but, at its base, yeah. you're right. Yeah, I mean, what you just summed up before is just so right. I think that's the accurate read of it, where he gives us something on that one topic, but the rest is kind of just, it's just not there really fully. I did sermons going into all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank goodness we have this outlet. Or else it would <laughs> bubble up some way other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you want you want to um, you want to talk about the law a tiny bit more, or or do you think we've 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 covered the function of the law? The you know the other the other big um, verse that's similar to that in a, a book that's similar is Galatians three nineteen, right where where it talks about the law coming so that the trespass would increase. Uh, why then the law? It was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come. To whom the promise had been made and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary uh is the law then contrary to the promises of god certainly not for if a law had been given that could give life then righteousness would indeed be by the law but scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in jesus christ might be given to those who believe that seems to go much deeper right galatians 3 all the way through um seems to go much deeper into this question than than just this glancing blow that we get here although that's more complicated uh i i i wouldn't mind just having this little bit that we get in romans where we're like oh okay the law amplifies sin i get it that way grace super abounds i'm good I'm, I'm good with that but it's complicated especially this whole idea of it it got smuggled in it it, it, it kind of you know is an intruder entering a home for unwanted purposes <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know you. The, the I, I don't I don't have anything to add to, to that discussion. I, I other than just to confess that you know, what what I want to do is swing hard in one way or the other, and, and you know I want to I want to go aha, you know the law was just a big mistake and or or something. You know there was no good in it whatsoever. You know thank yeah. God, thank God for Jesus, and we can just forget about all that nonsense. Um, but yet it's clear. You know, Paul, Paul is a respecter of the law. He upholds, he lifts up the law. Jesus spoke mm. well of the law. Um, you know, Moses is, is never disparaged by Christ in any way whatsoever uh, at, in his capacity as the lawgiver. So yeah. there's tension that, you know, is very uncomfortable because I, I yeah. really don't 
have anything to say about it. I, I don't. I don't know. Right. I'm really stuck. E- either way, you're screwed. Either way, you're screwed. <laughs> you don't want to offend God. Nicely either way, put. you're very Nicely close put. to offending God. Either way, on that position, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, also, yeah. God wrote the law with his finger too, right? On the stones. Yeah, hey, yeah, he did. I mean, second so time pretty, around, anyway. Second, second time, the first time. Second, yeah, he, the revision. Yeah, yeah. First, not first, first edition. Time. It's not first edition, so yeah, I don't the know. First, the first not worth as much. Came, first edition came through angels, um, right. according to Paul, but not according to the Book of Exodus, uh, which, <laughs> yeah. is, which is which, which is our second temple literature moment for the uh, for for our Romans podcast. That comes out of the book. Of, <laughs> that comes out of the Book of Jubilees, which clearly uh-huh. Paul was reading when he wrote Galatians three. Are you going to talk about Genesis six now or no? <laughs> no, we we can if you like. <laughs> I, I I was tempted with a quote from uh, Second Estrus and Wisdom of Solomon. There they both go. were very poignant with regard to original sin and some other things. Really? But I but I but I backed off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. So and uh, I liked your point that you made too today, where you said, "Remember how you said that people get very hung up about the potential fairness of the." of adam's sin kind of you know trickling down but then you said that oh, people yeah. don't mind at all that when when they know that they're a sinner on their own merits and taking christ's sacrifice yeah. that doesn't bother anyone that yeah. part of it right but that's all because we're yeah it, it, western individualism <laughs> right we, we're not used to this whole covenantal solidarity but we're okay that, with that, it with that, jesus that, though you know that's i like that yes, point we are yeah, people yeah, don't bring it on there. That. They go, oh yeah, yeah, of course. This this overflowing, you know, sacrifice and blood sacrifice and mercy for you know my transgression. Nobody really questions that too much. But then they yeah, don't like that yeah. Adamson. You know, you think there's a level that people disdain that idea, though, right? Of of this kind of, of because of the individualistic, you said, right, nature of people now nowadays. You know, I, I've encountered more than a couple that have, you know. Uh, be, be become enlightened with this amazing ability to no longer misread scripture through Western eyes of individualism. And amen for that, by the way. But um, <laughs> it, it, it is interesting that the, the people that kind of throw that back at me <laughs> do so with a chip on their shoulder uh, and also are um, disconnected from community and pursuing it at a much more individualistic pace uh, than, than most people that I know, uh, especially people that are in fellowship with us. So it is this incredible irony that it is an individualistic bent railing against Western individualism, <laughs> yeah. but, 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 but yet at the same time rejecting the very mechanism uh, for uh, the, the community, which is the body of Christ. And, and so. at the root, but, and, and I don't, this this might be funny. I, I'm not saying it to be funny, but at the root of it all is the original sin of Adam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, the, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In their hearts is, is it, they arrogance. Want to see right, God. right, right. Yeah, God yeah. is not fair. Did did God final really, arbiter? Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna die. You don't have to trust God. You know, it, it's uh, it's uh, I, I'm I I'm gonna be God. Um, you know, uh, and if I have to stop going to church uh, and, and be selective about which passages I give credit to, uh, to achieve that, then that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that, that's the, that's <laughs> the sin. That's, that, that's the sin of Adam. It's a brilliant filter. Um, <laughs> amen. Hey, look, how about the one, one last thing that is, is um, it looms in, in this passage. It's easily explained, but nonetheless, a lot of people hang on to it. Uh, Rob Bell, of course, uses this passage to support the idea of universalism. Uh, To go a little bit deeper in this, I'll I'll go ahead and read a little bit again. Um, Starting um, starting in verse 15, but the free gift is not like the trespass for if many, now we're gonna have the word many here before we get all, all. So that's, but I wanted to start here. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more, have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. So we're in the many range. Verse 16. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For it is because of one man's trespass, death reigned through the one man, much more will those who receive, that's important uh, phrase there, 
those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass, here's the big one. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men. So the one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. And, and that's, the, that's the payoff pitch right there uh, for universalism. Uh, verse 18 is righteousness leads to justification and life for all men by the, the one act of righteousness. Um, I, I think if we were to harmonize with everything else that we just read, even, even that short little span, right? Uh, well, yeah, all who receive the gift, all who through faith receive the gift. How about chapter five, verses one and two that, that we just began the section with uh, talks about those who through faith uh, re receive all of this. So yeah, and anyway, also, I don't know if you guys just, have any other thoughts. Yeah, yeah, I have a quick thought on that because I was just thinking about it when you just brought it up and like with First Corinthians 15, 22, for as in Adam all die, for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, mm. right? So it's the distinction if you're in Adam, that all in Adam are dead, all in Christ yeah. are, are alive. And then we know from other scriptures that not everyone is in Christ. Right. And, and we'll, we'll actually talk about a, a more specific mechanism for being in Christ through baptism in the next right. podcast, right. Well, in the yeah. next chapter exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah, uh, right. It segues that, perfectly that'll be interesting. into yeah, Romans 6. Yeah. Um, and also, I would ask that guy that you were talking about, the universalism scholar, ask him, what, what were all those people in Matthew 25? Where were they going, though, in the sheep goat judgment to the left? <laughs> the left. <laughs> both ways were pointing to, the, to heaven or ne both right, left didn't matter, all going in the same direction? Yeah, well, what, how about Revelation 20, <laughs> verse 10 and following? How about the judgment scene? You know, what, what, what's that a vision of? A false future? Um, yeah, well, anyway, I, I think we can, we can, but, but it is interesting that this is the proof text that is pulled out that the, uh, the one act of righteousness leads to justification. Okay. So you know what? That's clear enough. We don't probably have to spend any more time on that. Can we, can I point out one other thing that's just kind of cool and, yeah. and, and, and it's this in verse 17, you know how the, the whole passage has, um, just as so also just as, right? Just as Adam, so also Jesus, right? Just as death, so also life, right? So uh, we, we've got this on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, countervalences that continue. Verse 17, it says, for if because of one man's trespass, death reigned. So what do you think would be the so also contrast to death reigned? So like without looking at the text, what, what do you think would be the contrast to death reigned? Life. Exactly. You'd think that we all think it's going to be that, right? So, 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 but, but listen to what it says for if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through the one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life. Right. Pretty cool. Well, that's, that's us. He's saying, yes, yes. <laughs> Where are the counterbalance? Where are the counterbalance? Where are the, the oh, wow. uh, apodesis? To I, the I never caught, I honestly, I never caught that before. Right. It's so cool. I, I, wow. I, I never saw it before either. Um, oh my God. Boy, what a, what a powerful statement about the honor that is bestowed through, right? You, you get righteousness, not just sit on a couch. You get righteousness and honor and dignity to, to step on up. And rain. And, yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool considering like, wow, okay. Well, I, I, I never caught that before. That's, is that like pretty much all the main translations too are like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it, it's those who receive will reign. Not, not righteousness reigns, not, not life reigns, but those who receive the abundance of grace Ooh. and all the righteousness that goes with it, those are the ones who will reign I never in life. Caught I never caught that before. I've I love it. it. I love it. It's such a powerful but, concept. But but I think it's also important to point out that it's because of because the other con the contract. You're, you're talking about verse 21, right? Uh, no, I'm talking about verse 17. Oh, okay. Well, well, verse 21 does something very similar. 
It says right, now, now verse 21 has a good, uh, has a one that makes sense. Sin yeah. reigns, grace reigns, right? That, well, that makes but, sense. But it, well, but in my mind, so just as you kind of contrasted death, you know, well, the, what's the opposite of death? Well, naturally, you're going to think life. Likewise, when it says that sin reigned, you think, well, what's the opposite of sin? Righteousness. Think, oh, obedience or righteousness. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's grace. So it's a, it kind of, it kind of. That, that, you're right. That is an off balance statement, too. You're it, right. That's good. It, That's good. It, it ties us back to Christ because it, it, your obedience can't can't possibly hold up against your sin. Like like sin, sin, sin the, 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 the supernatural power of sin in the world is way more powerful than man's limited ability to be obedient. Grace yeah. on the hand, grace on the other hand is a good component or, or opponent or foil for uh, for sin. That's great. I, it, later yeah. in later in chapter eleven, he talks about he contrasts those who are disobedient with, and you want to say, oh, the obedient, and it's no, it's those who are disobedient with those who are under mercy. You know, it's right. God's mercy is the foil for your disobedience. You know, so they're very powerful. Oh, I know, right? We've got six, seven, and eight coming. Like it's just crazy. It's it's exciting, right? That uh, we we have all this content. Uh, that is so enriching and so uh, captivating to our souls. And then here, here's hoping and en energizing to our walk in Christ. Yeah. So fantastic. Anything else you think we've uh, covered most? Anything else that uh, we need to point out? No, this is, uh, this has been, uh, this has been pleasurably exhausting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and you know what? We didn't read in the beginning, but we ended up reading every single verse uh, uh, through, through, throughout our time. <laughs> that's awesome. So, uh, and probably a couple times for a few of them. Um, amen. Uh, I feel like I feel like I want to close this in prayer this time. Is that all right? I'd love that. Go ahead. God, uh, thank you, thank you that uh, you superabound in us. That uh, your grace reigns and abounds. Uh, taking us to a place, having received such a thing that, that, that we reign with dignity and righteousness and significance and honor uh, and purpose, that, that we're, we're called to do something really remarkable, uh, that, that we've been lifted beyond the station of Adam, even uh, because of the intervention of your son, who emptied himself and made himself obedient uh, to the point of, of, of death, uh, even death on a cross. Uh, that as Adam disobeyed regarding the tree, uh, Jesus obeyed, and that he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Uh, help us to appreciate how big this gift is. Help it to overwhelm us so that we enter into that gratitude, generosity, gifting cycle uh, with greater gusto, uh, excited at every moment to be able to engage in this dance, engage in this honorable connection to you. Thank you for, for uh, extending your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Good hanging, guys. Take care, guys. That was a good one. Yeah. We'll <laughs> love see you, brothers. All right. And I'm going to end...